So welcome to another video in our French and Indian War series here in Pennsylvania. And today's video is more of a biography, if you can tell by the title, it's about Major General Edward Braddock. In the future here, coming up in May, we are going to do a series of videos on Braddock's expedition in the summer of 1755, which ended pretty badly at the Battle of uh, Monongahela, where Brad, uh, Braddock was mortally wounded and died several days later. But that, like I said, we, hopefully in May we'll get those get that done. I do have a book here about Braddock's Road. I wrote down quite a bit of information, some notes about trying to follow that road as much as we can in several videos. And then, well, I guess we'll get to the Battle of Monongahela. But I would like to tell you, give you a little bit more background about Braddock before we do those videos. And I think I'll, we'll be doing more of these biographies on some of the other major players in the French and Indian War as far as Pennsylvania goes. Some other generals and some Indian chiefs and things like that, some local folks. We did one earlier on Conrad Weiser. But yeah, this video will be about Braddock, Edward Braddock. He gets a lot of criticism because uh, of his failures on the Braddock's expedition. But let's talk a little bit about who he was, where he came from, a little bit of his background. And because uh, I have some notes, I have some quotes that I wrote down that uh, from other people describing him. Sometimes I feel like the quotes, like I have a quote here from Ben Franklin that we'll read later. And some of their quotes kind of best describe uh, Bradward's uh, personality. He was known as a very uh, arrogant man, overly confident, arrogant, kind of a typical European general in some ways, if you can think of it that way. Uh, but yeah, but let's talk about his early life first, some things prior to the French and Indian War, and then we'll get to that as well. So Edward Braddock was born in 1695 in Scotland, I think Perth, Perthshire, Scotland. One site said he was born in London, England, but several said he was in Scotland. That's the problem with some of these uh, historical figures. There's differing information online about the same person. But yeah, he was born in 1695. His father was also named Edward Braddock, and his father was also a major general in the British Army. So uh, our Edward Braddock basically followed in his father's footsteps as a career military officer. His mother is unknown. Her name, for us, I could tell, was unknown. And his father died in 1725 then. So that would make Braddock about 30 years old when his father died. I should mention, too, that there is no known actual portrait of Edward Braddock uh, that, they, that they know of. There's a, when you do research, they have a, do have a portrait that shows up, but people, it's kind of hotly debated, that, hotly debated whether that's him or not. So there's no known actual authentic portrait of him. But anyway, but like I said, he followed his father's footsteps in the military, becoming like a career officer. At the age of 15, he became an ensign in one of his father's regiments, and then by 1716, just six years later, um, he was a lieutenant, I guess, in that same regiment. And then uh, but it took about 20 years for him to get advanced to the next rank, which I think was rank of captain. I might have to cheat, look at my notes here. There's a lot of, a lot of different years and ranks. But I think it was like, yeah, from 1716 to 1736, there was a 20 year period there where he didn't really rise in the ranks at all up until 1736, when he was 41 years old, he became captain. Let me read some other ones here. Then by 1743, he became a major, and in 1745, he became a lieutenant colonel, right? And by 1753, he became a full colonel, and in the following year, he was made a, a major general. And then, of course, instead of 1754, and that's when the French and Indian War started. Um, of course, we, we filmed that spot, you know, Jumonville Glen, where George Washington and some of his soldiers and uh, the Virginia militia and uh, some French encou encountered each other in the wilderness of what is now Western Pennsylvania. So, and then of course the following year, 1755, is when uh, Braddock came to America. He was the, I guess the commander of the British forces of the 13 colonies. And he also led the expedition to Fort Duquesne, which like I said, eventually did fail. But going back just a little bit in time, in 1747, he did, he was one of the British commanders during what was during the war of what's known as the war of Austrian succession and he was one of the defenders of a Dutch a Dutch fortress like as you say in the Netherlands the, the siege of Bergen Bergen op Zoom I think I got that right uh, and that didn't go well he was serving under uh, the Prince of Orange uh, who was the leader of the I guess you could say it was Holland at that time that siege um, they, they were under siege by the French it was basically the the British the Dutch the Austrians and a few other, like the Hanoverians and Hessians against the French. and uh, But the French laid siege to that fortress and that fortress did fall. So that seems to be one of his major uh, military experiences back over in Europe. 
Yeah, and I'm kind of thinking, like, in the end, like I said, he was made a, a major general and then uh, put in command of all the British forces here in the colonies. I'm kind of wondering why. He doesn't seem to have the greatest amount of military experience to be put in charge of all, thir all you know, 13 colonies, all British forces. But anyway, it was done. Um, he was, like I said, he was a career officer. I probably maybe had something to do with the fact that his father was a career officer and also a major general. That's just, just some thoughts of mine. I feel like maybe there have been more qualified folks to take on that position, but... But what do I know? I'm just a guy here in the year 2022, think, looking back to 1755. <laughs> I mean, that's all I could really find in his earlier career before, before the French and Indian War. But he did arrive here on February 20th of 1755 in Hampton, Virginia. And then by July 13th of the same year, he was dead. Pretty much ended, you know, he was here, what, like four and a half months maybe. Not all that long. But yeah, there were a number of expeditions that took place that year. Some other generals were attacking some other French and Indian forts, but he's the one that led the, the expedition to Fort Duquesne, uh, which ended disastrously. But of course, we'll talk more about Braddock's expedition and the Battle of, Monongah and the Battle of Monongahela in, in more depth in future videos. This, just, this video is just more just to talk a little bit more about Braddock himself. But he was highly criticized. Uh, for thing, for many things, like he, him and George Washington did not get along at well at all. Uh, Washington volunteered to be one of his military aides during that expedition. Uh, Washington survived, you know, somewhat miraculously that uh, battle of Monongahela. And him and someone else are the ones that kind of pulled Braddock away from the battle. Um, he survived the battle, but he did die four, four, I think about four days later. And we visited his grave last year, Braddock's grave, out there in Fayette County in Pennsylvania. So yeah, uh, and Washington and others, including Franklin, tried to school Braddock a little bit on what warfare was like here in the wilderness of the colonies, the wilderness of Pennsylvania. Um, but he, like I said, he was very arrogant. Here's his response to George Washington, because Washington tried to inform him that maybe best that the military tactics that they used over in Europe, because back in those days they kind of just lined up, you know, the good guys and bad guys and just got shot at each other. It wasn't a whole lot of tactics sometimes, but here, in the wilderness, uh, the Indians fought, and they called it the Indian style of warfare, and so did the French. The French kind of adopted that warfare, you know, just kind of hiding in the woods, blending in, and doing more ambush techniques rather than just, you know, full frontal battle type thing that they were used to over in Europe. But his, this is his response when uh, Washington tried to teach him or instruct him. He says, what? A provincial colonel teaches a British general how to fight? Yeah, so he did not take Washington's advice at all. He kind of scorned him, actually. Yeah. Uh, which proved to be his downfall in the end, if you think about it. And Ben Franklin also set, you know, talked with Braddock, too, about maybe how he should you know, change his tactics a little bit, how things are different over here. Um, and here's, here's Ben Franklin's opinion of, uh, of Braddock. It's kind of interesting. It, it's... He's kind of being mean, but he's kind of being nice at the same time. He, it, what is it, being a diplomatic, political, I guess you could say. He says, This general was, I think, a brave man and might probably have made a figure as a good officer in some European war, but he, has, he had too much self-confidence, too high an opinion of the regular troops, meaning the regular British troops, and too mean of an opinion of both the, the American and Indian troops. So mean meaning a low opinion. So he thought... His British troops were far superior to anything that the American troops or the Indian troops had to offer. And he was vastly wrong on that, as we, as we find out later. So yeah, he thought, you know, the, the regular military tactic, tactics that him and his British troops would use, like in any European battle, would be far superior to anything he would face, you know, facing troops over here. And uh, yeah, like he's very, very arrogant about that. And then I have a response, then I have Braddock's response to Franklin, because I said Franklin also tried to instruct him a little bit and this is this is Braddock's these are Braddock's words responding to Franklin he says these savages may indeed be a formidable enemy to your raw American militia but upon the king's regular and disciplined troops sir it is impossible they should make any impression so yeah basically he's in insulting the American troops over here saying that you know maybe maybe these Indians and French the way they fight is you know formidable to your American troops over here, but to my superior British troops, you know, there'll be no problem. So that's that's his that's the level of his arrogance. And I have another quote here by Braddock himself. It's one of his last phrases, words he ever said. He's he was quoted as saying, you know, 
who would ever have thought? <laughs> I guess that means he never thought that it would end this way, that he would die at the hands of these troops that he so scorned. You know, along with scorning, you know, the American troops, probably the, the way the French and the Indians fought over here too. He just thought he was far superior to them, and then in the end, he ended up dying because of those same troops. You know, so who who would have thought that it would have gone down this way? But he did. Of course, we could say more in this video about his defeat and his other tactics during the expedition. But like I said, we'll talk about that in future videos. Um, one interesting thing, though, is you know, when we visit Braddock's grave, like he died four days after the Battle of Monongahela, and they buried him in the road that he, the, the, what's called Braddock's Road. We visit that site. They buried him in the road because they were worried about, because they were kind of fleeing the battle and, you know, getting out of there. So they knew if they buried him in a very conspicuous grave that the, the Indians would come along and the French maybe didn't uh, defile his grave and, I you say, abuse the body. So in order to keep that from happening, they buried him right in the middle of the road and he had the troops, Washington had the troops just walk over that grave site to make it just look like it was regular road. You wouldn't know that someone was buried there. I think in 1804, when they were improving that section of the road, because Braddock's Road, a lot of places, was used as a, continued to be used as a road, but in 1804, they found some remains on that road, in that spot, and they figured it was General Braddock. And they, uh, years later, um, he, his bones are still there, reinterred in that spot, but I think there's a monument there to him where they put the bones then. Yeah, so there you go, just a brief little biography on Major General Edward Braddock. Yeah, you can learn. You can always learn lessons from from everybody, including him. You know, he, he was didn't seem to be well liked by most anybody. It seems you know most everybody comments that he was a rather overly confident, arrogant type of person. You know, you can't think if he would just can't help but think if he would just listen to his subordinates and to other people when he came over here because this was not this was not Europe. They did not fight in the European style of fighting over here. Uh, it was very different. He would have just listened to other people. Maybe things would have turned out drastically different on his campaign to try and take Fort Duquesne from the French. Just maybe it would have been very different. But, uh, you know, he stuck he stuck to his ways and thought uh, thought quite less of those below him and the way, you know, he just thought, he seemed to think less in general of the Americans themselves. And actually, in a lot of ways, uh, after, the, after uh, Braddock's defeat um, in 1755, that's when a lot of the Indian raids began here in Pennsylvania. You know, Penn's Creek Massacre was October 16th of that year. Um, there was the one in uh, the Great Cove Massacre. There was the one in Naden Hooten. They all began around that time. And from what I read, a lot of it was due to General, to General Braddock himself. Because there were some Indians that were allied with him, and he, tre he treated them pretty badly. Um, he was very, he thought he was way above them. And in one case, he even threatened, like, if they, that after, when the British won the war, that they would, you know, remove the Indians from the continent and stuff. He treated them like, kind of treated them like garbage. And as a result of that, they kind of switched sides. And that's where some of those uh, Native American attacks then occurred on the settlers, due in a lot of ways to the way General Braddock acted and treated them. So, But the British did learn from that experience because in, you know, three years later, during what was called Forbes Expedition in 1758, uh, when they, another attempt to take Fort Duquesne, which was a lot more successful, they, try, they emphasized teaching the British troops and the colonial troops to fight in what they call the Indian manner, in the Indian way, the way the French and Indians were fighting out here in the wilderness, you know, the more the skulking and the hiding behind trees and that kind of stuff, rather than focusing on just fighting the regular European way. So they did, they did learn from their mistakes in later years. Yeah, so my take on this whole biography is, you know, don't be a bleep in life. Yeah, you could insert any word you want there. There's one in my mind, but anyway, you know, learn to, uh, don't be so arrogant and overly confident about yourself. Learn to be able to listen to those below you, at least listen to what they have to say. And if you don't, if you disagree with them, you don't have to put them down, treat them horrible. And they might actually have something good to say that maybe you should listen to. All right, but that is Major General Edward Braddock. Like I said, in a couple months, we'll be filming more about his expedition, following Braddock's road as best we can, filming the Battle of Monongahela and going to Fort Duquesne as we are on future videos. Like I said, there'll be more of these biographies um, in the future, talking about some of the other major players in the French and Indian War, just to learn a bit more about who they were and their background. All right, um, as always, thanks for coming along, and I'll see you on the next one.